This phone is anticipated to be released probably last year, but it didn't make it, but instead it, it just got released this year. And I'm talking about the Xiaomi Mix 4. Xiaomi dropped their name, the MI, and replaced it with the Xiaomi instead. But we're not here to talk about the name dropping or the name change, but instead we're going to unbox the Mix 4. Are you excited? Let's go. Hi guys, it's me Richmond of Gadget Psychic and welcome back to my channel. So we can see and we've just unboxed the Xiaomi Mix 4. And I can say that this phone is really nice. It's a lot lighter compared to my Mi 11 Ultra, which is here. Now flagship phones do come with flagship specs. This one is packed with the Snapdragon 888 Plus, which is of course just a little bit better compared to the Snapdragon 888. It's probably something like an overclocked Snapdragon 888 series. And right now we're going to check uh, this, some benchmark here on this phone. Well, I'm not really surprised with this score. It just only gathered uh, 770,000 points on Antutu. Uh, well, to me, it's a little bit questionable since I've seen phones with Snapdragon 888 scoring more than 800, but this one, it's a little bit behind. Checking Antutu benchmark, this one is a little bit, well, more than my expectation, a million, 132,000 points. Some max out scores here on 3D Mark for benchmarking. Some pretty decent score also here from Geekbench. So one of the most anticipated questions here on my channel is, is this Widevine level one? Yes, it is. So speaking of Widevine level one, I was able to watch some videos here on this phone, uh, watching some on Netflix, some on YouTube, and I can say the display is nice. Without that irritating punch hole, on the screen, well, that is the trademark of the Mix series. And yeah, the camera is already hidden on this one. I can say that I love the display on this one and was able to watch some really decent movies here. Uh, and the sound is also pretty nice. Having that Harman Kardon speakers here is definitely a big plus when you're watching videos. Now this phone rocks a 6.67 AMOLED display together with 120 Hertz of screen refresh rate. HDR10+, and of course, it's 
800 nits. Uh, max brightness on this one, definitely when you're using it outdoors under the direct sunlight, it's really nice and you can really see everything that you want to see on your phone, even the sun is at its peak. And this phone is protected by the Corning Gorilla Victus, which is of course the latest from Corning Gorilla Glass. And the side frames is made out of aluminum and the back is made out of ceramic. Now ceramic is known for its scratch resistance, but how resistant it is, you probably might want to ask Zach of Jerry Riggs for that answer. Now I've tried some games here on this phone. Knowing that this is a Snapdragon 888 Plus, it's definitely gonna rock all those games. Uh, being the Call of Duty, the PUBG, the uh, Genshin Impact, and of course the Mobile Legend. Now, this is the setting that I got from Call of Duty. I can probably play with all the settings that I want for graphic settings, and the gameplay is really nice. So I can say that the frame drop is almost non-existent, and I can hardly feel any hitches or glitches here on this one. And well, together with the nice display at 120 hertz of screen refresh rate, and of course the nice speakers on this one, the Harman Kardon speakers, I was able to enjoy the game experience on this phone. And it's really something that you want to try on any flagship phone sporting that latest chip from Snapdragon. Of course, it's gaming. And I can really vouch for this phone having a nice experience for gaming. Well, the back is a little bit hot when you're playing beyond 30 minutes. I probably would suggest that you might buy a cooler to keep it cool. Now, this phone really has a nice camera at its back. It has the latest 108 MP uh, main sensor together with a 13 MP ultra wide lens. It also has the 8 MP periscope telephoto lens, which can go as big as a five times optical zoom. Up front, of course, you cannot see the camera punch hole. Uh, it's already under the screen. It's called CUP, the camera under panel, and you can no longer see it. And also is a 20 MP front shooter. So right now, let's take some photos. Now checking some photos from the rear camera, I can see that it is really nice, it's sharp, it's punchy, and I can really tell you that this can almost go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the flagship Mi 11 Ultra since this one is also a flagship phone. Now uh, taking all those outdoor shots and indoor shots, I can say it's really nice. I uh, was able to perform even at night light. Uh, then of course, taking a quick look at the front camera. This one is really a new technology since Xiaomi tried to develop it for already five years. The camera, camera under uh, panel, the CUP, is really something at its infancy stage. Now taking some photos, I can see that it's not really the best photos from a flagship phone. Now, uh, the Mi 11 Ultra can capture something much, much better. But this one, I can say it's just average since it's a little bit grainy even on low light. Now, uh, they still have yet to perfect that uh, this technology, but I can say that this technology is really something promising. I really don't like the slider from the Mimix 3. This one is a lot better. Now this phone packs a 4,500 mAh of battery supporting up to 120 watts of fast charge. I drained it down to 18% charging it back up to 100. It just took me 25 minutes and Xiaomi said in their laboratory it can charge as fast as 15 minutes giving you 100% charge. Well, I have yet to try it. 
but this one also can support 50 watts of uh, wireless charging and of course some reverse wireless charging. Now flagship phone normally don't last you the whole day. Who says so? Uh, this one can last you for 12 hours and 2 minutes based on my screen on time test from PC Mark. And well, on normal usage, like a little bit of social media, a little bit of music tripping, a little bit of uh, watching videos, and a little bit of gaming. Now, it was able to last me a whole day without hitting the charging dock. But if you are a heavy user, which I am, uh, you might really want to bring on that power bank or that uh, portable gun, gun charger for you to be able to charge this any time of the day, since it won't even last you for beyond half a day if you are a heavy user. So I love everything about this phone from the design and of course the display and the camera at the back. The only thing that I don't like about this one is of course the front camera. It doesn't really perform up to that flagship level expectation that I have. But of course, I know that this is still on its infancy stage. It has a lot of room for improvement and it's very promising because I hate that punch hole on, the, on front of my screen. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, click that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos here from my channel. So I'm Richmond, and you're watching Gadget Sidekick. What's up?